All right. We are underway for our playoff preview edition here on Prime Sports Network for the NASCAR Cup Series in 2024. See you ever doing, of course, joining me. As you can see right there, that is the upcoming race that we are going to be talking about in the second part of our show. But to kick things off, it's going to be about the playoffs. How's it going, CJ? We're finally here. We are finally at the 10 race stretch of the playoffs after another crazy end to the regular season. Looking forward to it. Yeah, uh, it's, you know, it's interesting because the playoffs really come by fast because there's 10 races in it. So I think that's another good thing. But we had some surprises over the last few weeks uh, to get in. And I must say that uh, the race on Sunday night, you know, for the most part, it, it was typically, uh, it could happen at Darlington. It was boring for a while uh, with Kyle Larson dominating. And then as soon as there was a caution, big surprise, as soon as there was a caution in the final segment, everything changed. And wow, what a race to the finish between Briscoe and Kyle Busch. I mean, that was really something else. Uh, you know, I, I hope Chase Briscoe performs well during the playoffs. I, I think the worst thing that could happen is Chase Briscoe does nothing and Kyle Busch winds up having a good run during the playoffs. And uh, he came that close to actually uh, being somebody that could have contended for a championship. But either way, that was a gutsy, gutsy uh, ride by Chase Briscoe. Yeah, it, and it goes to the track and it's something that we've talked about forever in terms of how you get good racing it's not about necessarily the car or anything like that it's about making the tires wear and that's exactly what darlington does and that's why you had a good race at the end because you had old tires versus new tires track position is track position going to overcome grip is grip going to overcome track position and it was a really good race and um you know briscoe just nailed it on that last restart that gave him enough of an advantage that <clears throat> by the time bush was able to get himself through the traffic with his new tires uh briscoe had insulated himself enough and and yeah bush got very close but then that goes to the aerodynamics of this car where once you get in the wake bush even said afterward once he got into his uh briscoe's dirty air he just didn't have the forward momentum to be able to get there and actually make a pass happen which is what we saw the majority of the race up until that point so yeah uh it's interesting i did the show on saturday the starting lineup show and we went over a couple of drivers that looked pretty good based on qualifying which were briscoe and Josevar. we didn't really talk much about those drivers i mean you know why should we they didn't really have a great track record overall except earlier that year and Josevar actually did really well in the truck series and an xfinity series at, at darlington but there was no reason to talk about it unless he did qualify well, which he did. Briscoe, same thing. He actually had a good result this year. And so it turned out to be one of those situations where it was like, all right, well, you know, he's, he's probably going to be around, which I think he was around, I think he was 40 to 1 on race day. Sort of like a Dylan deal from a few weeks ago. Look, you want to mm -hmm. throw a buck on one of these guys, go right ahead. You don't really think it's going to happen, just like Dylan winning. But we almost had Dylan win. We had Burton win. We had Briscoe win. I love this. I don't see any reason why it's not good. But why do you th do you see a trend here for any particular reason, or is this just one of those things? I think it's one of those things you've got, and we could have another one this weekend because of the nature of the track. I mean, if you look at Daytona, um, you've you've got a history of interesting kind of first time winners popping up there that you don't expect. Darlington, not so much, except for the fact that exactly like you said, uh, Briscoe qualified well, and he's got a pretty decent history there. So um, Dylan, and I think we've seen it, <clears throat> Dylan, I would put in a different category um, because I think we've seen it with Kyle Busch as well. Uh, Richard Childress Racing, I, I think at the beginning of the year, I had probably both of them in my top 16 and making the playoffs because it's inevitable that Dylan wins a race. It's inevitable that Bush wins a race, but they've had so many problems this year that other people have stepped up and other teams have stepped up and been able to take that mantle away from them. And they've not gotten uh, over their problems until just recently. So uh, I put them in a little bit different category. Uh, I come into Atlanta, 
you know, it's not Talladega or Daytona, but it's still super speedway draft style racing. You get those big crashes where you get a, a lot of carnage. And if you're able to survive those, it takes a healthy dose of luck. Uh, you might have somebody to pop out um, that was completely unexpected as well. Chase Briscoe, you got to go back to New Hampshire in June, end of June for his last top 10 finish. And it was actually runner up at New Hampshire. And then prior to that, um, it was Darlington. Uh, so he only had one other top 10 finish prior to winning, and that was at New Hampshire, splitting the two Darlington races. So, yeah, somewhat <clears throat> you can put him in that category of unexpected. Um, I would argue Carson, H Carson Hosevar shouldn't be in there because I put him in my fantasy lineup for Darlington every single time. <laughs> uh, just about. Uh, I considered Briscoe, but I, I put that out before qualifying happened, and then when I saw the qualifying, you know, you know, the battle that he had in Xfinity with Kyle Busch years before just shows he's one of those guys that gets this track. Uh, so I think it's just one of those things. Um, we could see another one this weekend with Atlanta, so don't be surprised. Um, but it, I, I don't know that there is anything unique or different about what has been going on to produce the unexpected winners more recently. Okay, it's time to talk about the playoffs and let us move over to the futures so we can uh, and and i haven't looked at the, we haven't really talked about these futures for a few weeks so uh we'll, we'll try to make some predictions here but uh as well as of course what we're going to do is we're going to give you our final four picks for phoenix our champion of course and we'll take a look at maybe a couple of sleepers to keep an eye on not necessarily to win the championship but you know maybe you get to the final four or maybe you do something you know like you know Hey, I, I'm going to pick Briscoe to get to the final eight, something like that. Um, but just a couple of sleepers maybe to keep an eye on. And by the way, uh, just referencing uh, what we uh, went with to start the season uh, was, do you remember your predictions? Uh, probably Hamlin Larson. Probably yes. Blaine. No. No. Um did I put Logano You're forgetting your champion. Bell? No, that was me. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know then. I forgot. William Byron. <laughs> oh, Byron, yes. Okay. And well, and the I, last I, one? I, that looked good early. Not so much now. <laughs> well, that's true. That seems to be William Byron. Uh, yeah. But the other, four, the other was Joey Logano. So you had yeah. Byron, Hamlin, Larson, Logano. Anyway. I knew I had a Penske guy in there. Just couldn't remember which one. Byron was your champ. And do you remember what your sleeper was? Um, Reddick? No. I don't know then. Busher. Uh, so Busher was 20 to 1. Uh, uh, what was Reddick? Reddick was 16 to 1 when the season started. So my four, I also had Byron. Just like you. I had Chastain, who didn't even make the playoffs. And then I had Elliot and Bell, with Bell being my champ. And Chastain was my uh, championship sleeper, and all he did was sleep. So he didn't do anything. <laughs> it was a disastrous year for Ross Chastain. So there you go. That's what we talked about. Those were our predictions before the season began. And now we're going to go ahead and take a look at what we uh, will do here. First of all, let's take a look at the futures before we get into our predictions. All right, so uh, what are we going to say here? It's going to be Larson, oh, Hamlin. Larson and Hamlin. Bell probably third. Yeah, either that or they're all top three together. Hamlin, Larson, Bell. Those would be the obvious ones, right? So let's see what we got here. Yeah. See, there's Larson, four to one. Hamlin, it's about tied, and there's Bell. So perfect, pretty much. Not a surprise. Uh, yeah. Okay, so who do we think should be next after this? Let's see who the contenders are. The contenders right now. would be Reddick, Byron, Blaney, Elliott. Maybe you think those are the top contenders? Reddick, Byron, Blaney. I would Elliot. say Reddick, Blaney. Reddick, Blaney are next. Yeah, I'll put Byron in that list only because of. 
Yeah. On yeah. Agreed. Redick. Yeah, he's just too hot coming into the playoffs. Blaney next? Yep. Byron. Uh yes, I'll go Blaney. Oh Byron, really? No way. No way I'd go for that right now. <laughs> there's Blaney. <laughs> And there's Elliot. And there's Elliot. It's not a bad number for Elliot. It's really not a bad number for both Blaney and Elliot. No. And then who do you think yeah, is next? Both of those look pretty good right now. Let's see. Uh, Kozlowski, Logano? Logano. Gibbs? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. All right. Let's no. See. <laughs> no Gibbs. Okay. Truex! He's all the way at the bottom of the standings. There's Logano and Kozlowski. I actually thought Truex was going to come after Logano and Kozlowski. There's Gibbs, but a big jump, 35. I almost said... Yeah, I almost said Truex um, just based on the fact that he seems to be getting a lot of love for yeah. whatever reason in Vegas, despite the fact that his results really don't show it. And there's the rest. Bowman, and then the ones that are considered, just forget it, you save your money, are Briscoe, Suarez, Sindrick, and Burton. Out of those four, who would you take to make at least, an, to, 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 to win a round or two? In other words, you know, be there for Briscoe. the next round or two. I'd say Briscoe. Okay. Briscoe. Briscoe or Suarez, certainly, but Briscoe for me. All right. And then how about between Gibbs and Bowman? Who do you trust more? I don't know. Um, Neither. <laughs> I, I mean, Bowman for me because yeah, that's you know, tough. He's, um, he's, he's a veteran. And he's actually had a pretty decent season, even though he's kind of cooled off a little bit. But, I mean, Gibbs hasn't won a race yet. He's gotten better recently. So yeah. yeah, that's that's disappointing. I Yeah, probably Bowman, just because Gibbs has, hasn't won a race. But Gibbs gets top tens consistently, uh, whereas Bowman's kind of more up and down. Okay. So, let's go ahead and talk about the races and whether or not you believe they're going to be a factor in any of these rounds and if so which ones because first of all we're going to be dealing with atlanta which is like daytona and and um uh talladega and then of course we've got short track at watkins Glen, and then i mean road course and then short track with bristol so definitely there's variety no question about that um, and then in the round of 12 you have another road course and then you have talladega so another super speedway so you got a super speedway in top first uh, the uh, the first two rounds you've got a, a a a road course in the first two rounds and the, I guess, normal type of tracks are Bristol in the round of 16 and Kansas in the round of 12. And then things get normal the rest of the way. There's no sh road courses. There's no, sh well, you do have Martinsville, but there's no road courses, you know, super speedways. Are you okay with this setup? Uh, no, I, I don't like two super speedways and two road courses in in the rounds like that i'm okay with spacing them out i'm okay with having two road courses and two super speedways in the 10 race stretch but round to round uh, is a little bit of a challenge um because you've got to like especially when you come to a place like talladega or if you're not good uh, alternatively on a road course you've got to have your work done basically a Kansas if you look to the next round. So, um, you know, Talladega is very much a, a crapshoot. Atlanta can be very much a crapshoot and say I'm not a great uh, road course driver. Watkins Glen and Charlotte, I can throw those both out the windows. So I basically have to, to perform at Bristol and Kansas. Um, I don't know uh, that that necessarily is the best timing um, of the schedule. 
Um, so for me, I would rather see them space further apart, like take take Charlotte, put it further down, maybe put it in the next round or something like that. Atlanta, I don't know, I put it back to the 1.5 mile oval where it's less of a super speedway and maybe you've got a, a different outcome there. So I, I just don't like them being back to back. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the fact that there are two road courses in the playoffs. I think one's enough, but... You know, and maybe even having one each of an, of the super speedways and the road courses, yeah, that that I think makes more sense. But anyway, you said the schedule came out for next year. Is is anything changed dramatically? Yeah, so my Miami came out of the playoffs. Miami is now going to be in March. Um, playoffs have got. Let's see. Phoenix again is going to be the ender. Oh, uh, we really all love that. Phoenix. We all love Phoenix um, being the championship race. It's such an awesome yeah. race at Phoenix. Yes, yes, no, no, no. Yeah, that's about it. And then a stop in the middle of the year at Mexico City. So uh, nothing really dramatic with the schedule. Probably the biggest news is that they're going to Mexico City for another road course. Okay, great. And they're not taking any road courses out? Now we've got uh, Charlotte Roval, October 5th. We've got Watkins Glen um, is actually out of the playoffs. That's August 10th. So uh, based on the Olympics not happening, we can kind of go back to the normal schedule. Uh, um, but yeah, uh, the addition the addition of Mexico City, uh, that's that's about it. Okay. Um, yeah, Secret of America is still there as well. So basically the extra week they're bringing back, that's going to be the Mexico City road course. Okay. All right. Okay, so uh, we have, by the way, uh, shout out to one of our young viewers, Marcus Villarreal. Is that how you pronounce your name, Marcus? Villarreal? Villarreal? Villarreal probably sounds better. He's 19 today, CJ. Happy birthday to Marcus. Congrat Congratulations. Excellent. <laughs> and he he wants to know who we're going to pick so we're going to get to that and he predicts christopher bell will win so well marcus i hope you were listening earlier in the year when mm -hmm. bell let's see what bell was when the season began let's see i forget what i got him at uh he was eight to one so it's almost been cut in half so hopefully you got him uh at the number i did but he still has to win it okay now let's go with our yep. picks so we don't need to go round by round let's just go ahead and uh get your uh, final four so do you have any major surprises as far as your final four you going chalk no <laughs> no no i don't um it's gonna be the same two, I same three actually that we've been talking about pretty much every single week. I expect them to get there. Really, uh, the the fourth one is kind of more, yeah. The fourth one's more of a flip of the coin. But uh, so Larson, Hamlin, I think Bell gets there, and then for my fourth driver, you know he's so hot right now. I, I'm debating between him and Blaney, um, Reddick or Blaney, as my fourth, <clears throat> and I think I go with. Uh, Reddick as the fourth. Wow. So you, you actually did go chalk. If it wasn't for Hamlin, his, his points taken away. You'd be going with one, two, three, and four. So is that what that is? That is true. What, yeah. So, all right. Well, we'll get you <laughs> sleeper, though. That is. I forgot about. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, I know. I, I get the whole deal with Larson, but here's the thing, too. And, and look, he, he has, because of the fact that he has that lead, that's the important thing. Because even though, I mean, we've said this before, it is 21, 34, 39, 34, 34, 21, 21. Uh, and, and a few of these other drivers are the same way. Don't get me wrong. I mean, Bell's got a bunch of 30s. So that's the reason why anything can happen when you're just dealing with three races per round, if one of these thirties occur, 
and it can to any of these drivers. It does not have to be Atlanta. So let's just say it does happen in Atlanta, and that's just that's pot luck. Now what happens if it happen, really happens in one of the other two races? Well, you, if you're Kyle Larson or one of these top drivers, you might be done. That might be it. So anything is possible, and that's what makes it that much more difficult. But I, I completely get what you're saying. I mean, I, look, I'm going to go with Larson and Bell. Uh, so, and, and, and look, I, I agree with you the way that Reddick is going. So I'll, I'll do that. And, and I, and I'm, I'm, I need to find someone. I mean, I think if you, who do you, if we're looking at like who is starting to, I mean, just look at this. Nobody here. Yeah. You have the two third, th you have third here and third here. But other than that, just look down this list over the last couple of races and nobody's coming in like super hot into these playoffs, even though Reddick is still like he got to go back with Reddick here at Charlotte all the way through, and he only has what two races yep. outside the top ten. So that's why Reddick, and I think that's why William. I think that's why William Byron um, can be scary because we know William Byron comes into these 10 races in the playoffs. And for whatever reason, he's able to find another gear and he steps it up. And that's probably why he's higher on the list in terms of the futures than some of the others that I would put ahead of him. We know William Byron steps up in the playoffs. Um, so he's probably one of those ones that has terrible results heading into these 10 races but that's why i think this format's so difficult to predict especially when you've got a super speedway and a road course in each of the first two rounds it just makes it impossible and like you said impossible to predict and like you said you have you basically get one mulligan race uh, if you're kyle larson that's not even a race you can get one bad race but you've got to turn it on for the other two the way that this format works now i mean look at truex he is, has not had a top five now going all the way back to Kansas. Two top tens. I mean, that is... Uh, how does he... he almost been terrible. And he, and he and Vegas wrecks. Vegas is still putting him up at the top. And he put himself <laughs> in that position. Yeah. It was so stupid. <laughs> Absolutely. And Vegas still puts him at the top. I don't know why. Like, I have turned off Martin Truex long ago. He's entering the playoffs with... 36th, 24th, and 24th place finishes. And then he had a second, second at Bristol, uh, but then 37th and 27th besides that. I, that's You get one mulligan round, Truex. When are you going to use it? <laughs> I don't think he's going to make it through. I'm going to go, I guess, uh, the one driver that I'll, I'll, I'm going to go with that'll be a little bit outside would be Kozlowski. So... I'll put Kozlowski in. I can go with it. I like Kozlowski. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, sleeper. So, now let's come down here. I mean, we could start even. So, if you take Elliott, then sleeper means sleeper championship win. But then all, all here, like these guys here, can just be final four sleepers. So, even though I already have Kozlowski in, he's kind of already my sleeper but i mean if i had to take like a championship sleeper i don't know i mean if i'm taking a championship sleeper i guess i'd go with logano you know since i already have kozlowski because logano's just yeah, that type of me, driver for me logano is a championship sleeper without question he's one that can make his way through he's been fast this entire season there have been several races that he could have won and probably should have won but didn't and i can see him making it all the way to the final four and if he makes it to the final four he's done it before no reason he can't win so yeah logano completely agree with you yeah uh other than that it's just really hard to i mean elliot at 11 to 1 to win a championship I mean, it's not bad, as I said before, you know, even going, even saying this, because you're not going to make a whole lot of money you, uh, with these four here. The, the, the problem is, is any of these guys can win the championship and you're going to have to pick one of them, which I'm sorry, but that's that that's a 25 percent chance. 
and that's not very that's not very good but what i could do is is do this i'm gonna put my money on byron blaney elliott and then like say kozlowski or logano or take kozlowski logano and two of these three and i can have you know or i could have kozlowski and logano and i could have five of them and i could actually make money and all right if they lose they lose but I just think it's a much better... Cause remember, nobody thought Ryan Blaney was winning the championship last year. Nobody. Yeah, I agree. And then if you want to talk about potential getting all the way to the top four, probably a sleeper there for me might be might be the Gibbs, um, Gibbs boy, uh, just because he's picked up his pace, fifth, third, and ninth at Daytona, Michigan, and Bristol before 20th at Darlington. So if he continues delivering those top fives, top tens, he could figure out a way to advance all the way through despite being at the bottom of the seating right now. Chances of him going forward and winning the championship, extremely low. I've put that on Logano. Uh, but yeah, I think, um, you know, otherwise you, you said a 25% chance with picking the top four. It, it's not even that because we still got nine races in order to get there. Yeah, and, and so remember this. So this is what it looked like. This these were the playoff drivers last year, and I mean, look at Blaney going into the playoffs. No top fives since his win at the Coke Six Hundred. See, he had three top tens, and come up four top point. tens since that win. No top fives. Yeah, and that's why I'm a, that's why I'm okay, I guess, a little bit more with the Byron uh, being sure. Byron odds being further up the the table because he is somebody that we've talked about many seasons. Um, he just steps up his game in those final ten, and yeah, his record coming into it certainly this year has cooled off from where he was at the beginning of the year. Yeah, because remember. I mean, look, look at Byron. Now, Byron, see, the difference from last year, see, see, this is interesting because you had Larson, Byron, and Bell. And, and Larson was nowhere near as good going into the playoffs as he has this year. Okay. Byron, though, I mean, uh, he, he was, you know, look at that. He had three wins going in over this stretch. He gets a win at Texas. And... I'm pretty sure no, I think Larson was the favorite because Larson picked it up with the two wins in the playoffs and he also had a runner up a couple of the top fives. Larson was the favorite, but a lot of people also look, were, were picking Byron to win that championship last year in the race. And Blaney was the third choice, yep. even though Blaney had picked it up himself like Larson and won a couple of times in the, in the playoffs. Christopher Bell was the long shot, and he was at yeah. it like that in, 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 in Phoenix. Yeah, it's all about – this format is all about peaking at the right time, and it it helps to have the momentum going it into does. it. But it does. it's really about building up that momentum through these right, – so you get to Phoenix. And remember last year – how about this? Last year, check out these – look at this – at Phoenix, Byron, and this was the reason why a lot of people thought Byron was going to win because he had won at Phoenix earlier that year. And he had Byron, and if Blaney was second mm -hmm. at Phoenix, and we know what happened with Blaney last year. That's the thing with Blaney. If Blaney can get in, to, if he can get to the to Phoenix, he, he don't care if he's fourth going into Phoenix. If he can get into Phoenix, he's been the best driver at Phoenix the last couple of years. Because he would have beaten Logano when Logano won the championship the year prior. He just let him win. And then he went ahead and, and, and he, again, he didn't win Phoenix, the race, but he did what he had to do. And he held off Larson and Byron and all the rest, uh, with Chastain winning. But still, uh, that's why Blaney is going to be in really good shape if he could just, and it's not going to be easy. He's got to get to the Final Four. But if he can get there, uh, he's going to be in really good shape. So let's go back to this year. Yeah. And uh, don't look now, but I, Ty Gibbs was third at Phoenix earlier this season as well. So if he's able to make it to the final four, 
um, that could be a surprise potentially. Yeah, Bell was the winner. And then um, let's move this down. There's Gibbs on the bottom here, third. Kozlowski was fourth. There's Blaney, another top five at mm -hmm. uh, Phoenix. And you know, Logano. You know, no, honestly, Logano really. He, he just this year has been pretty disappointing for Logano. But you just have to get hot at the right time. I mean, look at Truex. He gets off to such a good start this year. He probably should have won twice. And yes, is very lucky should to even be in the playoffs times, without a win. Yes. Yeah. So. Yep. Okay. All right. So you're gonna go Larson, Hamlin, Bell, Reddick. I'll go Larson, Bell, Reddick, Kozlowski. Um, but again, the betting strategies, my betting strategy and advice is going to be that I would I would go in some form of Byron. Blaney, uh, probably even Kozlowski and Logano, and uh, and then maybe even throw Elliott in there. That, that's that's the way I'm going to do it. I am not going to waste my money on any of these four because I don't have to. I've already got Bell. Now, if I if I was going to take a, a, a chance on one of these four, um, and and this is what it's all come down to. Because obviously I'm taking Bell, but if I if I just do as a, as my, my own portfolio, I already got Bell. What would I do with the with these other three? Got Larson, Reddick, I should just say uh, Hamlin. I don't have in here. But let's just say you know Hamlin's. You know I, I got look. The only thing with Hamlin is is that not that I don't think he could get there. It's just, I just don't know. Hamlin is starting to. I'm starting to get those vibes that it's just not meant to be. For Denny Hamlin to win a championship, I, I hope that's not the case. I think I think Denny Hamlin's good for the sport. I think he's got a good show. I think he'll have a good career after NASCAR. But you know, um, I don't know. I'm just not getting a good feel for Denny. Um, hope I'm wrong. I'd like to see him win, but um, I don't know. Maybe Reddick. Maybe Reddick would be the way that I would go. Maybe that maybe that's what I would do if I wasn't taking Bell. What about you? Who, you, who who's going to be your pick? Uh, my pick is going to be um, Reddick, actually, oh. because he's building up the momentum as these playoffs approach. Um, he's in a car that can do extremely well at Phoenix. We've talked all season, all season, about a, a driver, any driver, winning both races at the same track in a year, uh, this year in particular, and not a single time have we taken it. So that throws Bell out. <laughs> uh, for you with Hamlin, I, I agree. I think I think he chokes. Um, we'll see if he's able to overcome that. When he does, he will win his championship. I think he will win a championship at some point. Uh, but I think the last two years, maybe even longer than that, I've been putting him in there and he's, he's let me down each time. And then Kyle Larson just too inconsistent, too up and down. I think at some point it's going to bite him and it may well come at Phoenix. And by the way, he hasn't been as good at Phoenix as uh, the uh, the Gibbs boys and the Toyotas. So therefore, I'm going to go with Tyler Reddick. You know, uh, I think uh, I think another driver that could make a run to the final four would be Bowman. Because uh, you're looking at a long shot and you're looking at someone that, again, we talked about him having a really good year. Of course, he's cooled off a little bit. But he he still has the win. Uh, it's just that since he had this run here of a lot of top fives and top tens, he has the win, the third place. It just did not end well with those last five races. But still, I just think that overall, you're talking about a 40 to one shot that I think he could get into another groove again and find himself no wins. But find himself, you know, just hanging in there and hanging in there and hanging in there and getting into the playoffs as the number four guy. Not win a championship, but I just don't think he can win at Phoenix or come close to winning. Because, again, you don't have to win at Phoenix. Just finish maybe second or third. And that would be a typical Alex Bowman way. <laughs> yes, he <laughs> always kind of um, pops his way out, you know, unexpected. So, yeah, don't put that past Bowman. Okay, so there you go. Nothing earth-shattering, but hopefully the advice we just gave you will help you uh, with your playoff predictions.